As the featherweight division sorts itself out underneath champ Alex the Great, Dan Ige is beginning to look more contender than pretender. Why you should watch for Ige as he makes a title chase. Welcome back, bow throwers. This is Throwing Bows. I'm Jose. I'm here with Maria. Hey, everybody. And I'm here with John. Hey, what's up, everybody? All right. So let's take care of some business. Please like our work below. Um, we work hard at this. And uh, sometimes we record way, way, way early into the morning. Um, sometimes, you know, hey, maybe maybe there's a 2 a.m. shift in there putting in. So please like our work below. And uh, subscribe to our channel. Could be a bell shaking somewhere around. Uh, just, just hit somewhere. it. Y'all know where the y'all know where the bell shakes. Come on, guys. <laughs> Maybe by now. Um. All right. So UFC Fight Night 187 or UFC Vegas 21 or UFC whatever the fuck you want to insert is done. And so Dan Ige was scheduled to fight Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall, which is in case you didn't know, we're from the uh, Washington uh, D.C. area. Ryan Hall, who is in Northern Virginia. So uh, we like Ryan Hall around these parts. Um, he had to withdraw from the fight, though. Um, and so in step Gavin Tucker, very tattooed and very ready for a fight, at least according to the pressers uh, and the pre-fights. So um, this is pretty much the lay down. Here's how it happened. Um, Tucker goes down 22 seconds into the fight. So we're not even going to get into, like we usually do, game plans or anything like that. Everyone has a game plan. It's Mike Tyson. Right. Everyone has a game plan until they get punched in the face, uh, according to Mike Tyson. So um, he goes down with 22 seconds into the fight uh, and with Ige uh, throwing this beautiful cross. It's just a, it's it's kind of a right. It's, it's this right. It just kind of comes out. I'm not sure if, if Tucker, if Gavin Tucker was aware that Ige had hands. Um, you can excuse it. I went through tapology and I looked at all of his past uh, ones. He's never knocked anybody out off of his feet. Um, he's ground and pounded somebody like 10,000 years ago. Um, but most of the time, Dan Ige is a submission artist, or at least he's a grappler. Um, so I don't know if Tucker's camp even knew that Ige had hands. So um, with that being said, John, over under 1.5 rounds for Ige's professional, I mean, sorry, not rounds, <laughs> over under one, one and a half for Dan Ige's professional knockout record when his career is all said and done. I'm going to say over. I mean, he does have, he does currently have four. I mean, you know, depending upon how you word it, you know, uh, you know, ground and pound and knockout to knockout. You put a motherfucker to sleep, they go to sleep, you know. Uh, you, can put a, you can put a motherfucker to sleep by doing a lot of things. I don't know if that should count as a knockout, but continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, I, I'll go with the over. I like to gamble. Okay. Well, I like yeah. to gamble. I mean, scared. Scared money don't make money. Okay. It sure right. shit don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, how about this? So, I said uh, one and a half over under. Main, mainly kind of basically saying is as he moves up, you think that he's going to he's gonna probably catch somebody? Because he was the number ninth ranked um, featherweight. So, you think yeah. as he moves up, he may catch somebody else? Anything's possible. Absolutely. Oh. I mean, you know, he... You are. A he looks to be, man, sir. He he looks to be somebody who is currently taking himself seriously. Okay. Uh, All right. Because of his current run. I mean, he even said it. My wife is getting ready to pop. Hopefully, she didn't have a baby during this fight. Dana, I need that fifty thousand dollars. So you know, maybe having a kid is you know, or you know, his lady getting pregnant and having the birth of his uh, child. Maybe that changed some things for him. He attacks the game differently. I will say this before we move on to Maria. I do agree with one thing Dana White said, which is, you know, the fighters are human beings too. You know, they go through breakups, they get married, they have kids. You know, maybe kids just brings you a soft spot and it gives you something to fight for. I mean, we saw it with Cerrone. I mean, Nunes is still, I, I don't know if you want to say more motivated, but since uh, somebody popped out that baby for her, you know, she's doing great. So, you know, you maybe about parenthood it. does... <laughs> well, there's that too. So, Maria, Ige is known as a submission guy, but uh, did Tucker underestimate Ige's power going into this one? I think that anybody that looks at Ige as just a quote-unquote submission guy 
will be underestimating his power. Um, you know, you look at his professional at his professional record at fifteen. I think he's fifteen three and one. Of mm -hmm. that, only four of those finishes were by submission. So okay. while he's had some truly spectacular submissions, they look very pretty, it's kind of made this narrative that he is a submission guy when mm -hmm. in reality, he's a lot more balanced than that. So that said, I absolutely think that his um, striking was underestimated uh, by this camp. I think that he... <sighs> I, I kind of want to go back to something that, that you asked John about him having knockout power as he continues to move up. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I think that yes, but also look at the chins that are in front of him and several of the chins on that list that are higher up in the rankings have seen a knockout or two in their day against themselves. So, you know, it could translate. I th I hope that it puts people on notice moving forward to not ignore his ability to knock motherfuckers out because he can. But yeah, definitely, I think it was uh, underestimated. All I know is that there's someone on that island that uh, he can take a shot. So I don't know if there's at least one featherweight that he's going to make go night night. And that's one blessed Holloway. But that's that's a story for another day. Um, so Ige was the ninth ranked featherweight coming into this fight. Uh, he lost to Calvin Qatar. And, um, and, and, and he beat Edson Barbosa. So those are the only, those are the only top 15 guys now that, that he has on his list. So Maria going into this, is he overranked? Does he even deserve the number ninth ranking? Cause he lost to Qatar and he's only beaten Bar uh, Barbosa. Um, you know, I, I don't think so. Honestly, I, I think and John will probably disagree with me here, but I think that right now what's happening in the featherweight division is that the top is really strong. Like, And when I say the top, I'm talking like top five are really mm -hmm. strong and yeah. everybody else got some shit with them. Whether it's they've been around a little too long, they're probably past their prime, they haven't seen enough guys, whatever the case may be, this is not like some of the other divisions in my opinion where one through 10 or one through 15 is just fucking stacked. So that said, no, I, I don't really have a problem with where he's ranked. I don't particularly think he's much like he's the uh, division below them. Mm -hmm. Stacked. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is a different story, right? 35. That's, 35 oof, that's a fucking yeah. murderer's row is what it is. Yeah, 35 is, 35 is getting, getting pretty uh, tight down there. Yeah. But so, I, I don't, think he's overrated and i also think that like right where he's sitting is probably where he'll stay he can fight anybody between i'd say 11 and 6 and and it would be an interesting competitive fight he he doesn't have anything for the top three there's no question about that so yeah okay all right so john before we get ahead of ourselves um the 10th through 13th ranked featherweights can make a case they are one fight away from top seven before Ige even goes up, should he face one of them first, like uh, the guys that are right below him? Uh, I mean, you could definitely make an argument like that, but I wouldn't mind seeing him fight the call out that he called out. Mm -hmm. I think Zombie is an entertaining fight. Uh, okay. You know, in doing the prep work for this, you touched on something that I was going to mention in talking about this. Is I would rather see him fight his fellow Hawaiian in the battle of the ninth island in vegas you know so yeah. that's just me i'd like to yeah. see that and this is prior to you even mentioning it so yeah no i listen it. i'm with it uh, i i'm listen there has to be an un uh, uninhabited uh, island somewhere out there in hawaii and then we could just like make that the real fight island not that fake ass fake island out in uh out in the middle east we could just like make it a real fight island and like you got to get to it by boat like a like one of those like little dinghy boats that like bruce lee this is like, not Hulk mortal combat but anyway what's wrong um, with y'all no i mean but listen uh max holloway has been begging for them to do one in hawaii like listen yeah. the governor of hawaii he can't like be watching all those islands there's got to be an island they can cast away to and then just like not have to worry about covid but that's you know that's me so um, in his post-fight, uh, Ige called his shot. He did call his shot. He asked for the zombie, 
Um, and Zombie last fought Ortega in October of 2020. So it's it's been a while. It's been about six months now. Um, that was a tough fight, but there isn't a reason why Zombie couldn't be ready for a July card, um, especially considering that Ige put away – like he didn't get a scratch um, on this uh, after this fight. So Ige could fight tomorrow if needs be. But by a July card from a March fight, he will have at least uh, another three, four month um, camp that he could have. So, John, let's we're going to play role play here real quick. Um, you're the Korean zombie. Are you taking this call out? Is this exciting to you? Just because he, you know, you know, you're you're the zombie. Ige beats Tucker when he was supposed to be fighting um, <laughs> when he was supposed to be fighting uh, Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall is it, yeah, is this something that you take? Oh, absolutely, I take it. Huh. And I I think the zombie would it'd be like a Mortal Kombat fatality. I mean, it'd be it'd be an entertaining fight, but I think in the end, uh he may make Ige uh question his life decisions after the fight. So, you know, I'm all down for that. Yeah. It's it's definitely like, you know, one of those moments like when you wake up after a drunken stupor in D.C. and there's like two boxes of like jumbo slice and you're like, man, I didn't eat both of those, did I? And you just be like, oof, man, life decisions. So, you know, yeah, Dan Ige, you may want to you may want to think before you call out the Korean zombie, but I like it. Uh, so, Maria, let's uh, also play role play. Let's get a little kinky here. You're Dan Ige. Make the case why zombie should fight you. Because why not? I just had a great knockout. You had a great knockout before you lost to Ortega. Let's do it. It's the only way I can justify this because at the end of the day, um, there is still, he lost to Qatar. I don't think he's fought Emmett or Stevens yet. You've got people in front of you that you have not fought and you're trying to do that, that leapfrog into the top five, the top six. And I get it, like shoot your shot, right? And, yeah, and that's yeah, really absolutely. what this is. That's that's mm. all it is. But on paper, I don't think for a minute that Ige has actually done enough. I, as Ige, have not done enough to fight the mm. Korean zombie. But, you know, Uncle Dana likes when people talk shit. So if I throw it out there enough, maybe I'll get what I want, especially if, if the Korean zombie is game. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I, I like the way you're thinking there, Dan. Fake it till you make it. Bluff it till you it. stuff it. I get it, man. I, I, I love your style, Ige. All right. So let's get to the next to last segment. We're going to call this betting favorites. Maria, who do you take in an Ige zombie matchup? Ooh, I, I really, really like Ige. Um, I think he's got a puncher's chance. Um, the Korean zombie has a chin, but it's not like he hasn't been put to sleep before. So mm -hmm. there is that. And he's not getting younger. He is getting older. Um, so he has a puncher's chance, but that said, I still take zombie. Okay. So then let me ask you this question. Let me put it on his head before I kick it over to John real quick. What would be the odds I could give you that you would, you would put some money on Ige? Like how, how much do I gotta, how much do I gotta, uh, uh coax you into taking Ige if I wanted to take zombie? Mm, you give me about a plus. See, I want to disrespect Ige though, right? Because right. you give me you give me anything over like plus five hundred, I'm taking it. Uh, but I think that's a little disrespectful. Obviously, I'd say about a plus two fifty. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with plus two fifty. Okay, all right, everybody. Apparently, Maria also, likes big money around here. Also, I don't gamble, so. But yeah, yeah, that sounds good. All right. So, John, Ige or zombie? Uh, I'm going zombie. Not to say okay. that I don't think Ige can't pull it out. Sure. Uh, I do agree with Maria. You know, he is getting older. But one of the things that doesn't get talked about is in that equation of getting older is his two year break mm. uh, because of his service commitment. So that's yep, two years, that's even though I'm sure he was thrashing himself working out and things like that. That's still two years of not getting your ass kicked by yeah. other human beings that are trying that's to fair. end you. you know? Right. Yeah, that no, I, 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 th I, I think that we can either call that the, the uh, South Korean military obligation, or we can also just start calling it the dominant cruise. 
which is you know basically well it's uh, a little different a little different well it is dominic's body is is being you know dominic took a break because his body's being held together by bondo and paper clips at this point absolutely bubble Uh, in love absolutely yeah you know uh korean zombies break was because he went and served his country and you know that's an obligation of as a citizen there so absolutely. uh little different absolutely <laughs> we're just basically saying that it does help in some aspects for what you lose the fact that somebody didn't punch you in the face for however long they didn't punch you in the face that's fair it sure it sure fair. does it sure does uh make yeah. it last a little bit longer um since you presented so, it that way exactly all right, so let's let's play our last game. Um, we're gonna play fill in the br- blah, fill in the blank. And so, John, we're gonna start with you. If not zombie, Ige should get blank next. Uh, of course, like I already mentioned, I'd like to see him fight Max Holloway. You know, I'd really be interested in seeing that. But since we mentioned some of the other featherweights that are around, I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind seeing a Josh Emmett or a Cub Swanson. Ooh, Cub. My man, Cub. I would like to see that as well. I would love to see him square off against Cub. So, Maria, then I'm going to put that to you now. If not Zombie, Ige should get who next? Ooh, um, a swan, a Cub Swanson fight is always intriguing. Uh, but mm-hmm. also, I just like Cub Swanson, so I want to see him on the screen all day, every day. Uh, but that said, mm. actually, like the tattered up think, white guys, do you? Yeah, you know, I got to I got to think for he's the tattered vaguely, up white guys and the he's vaguely the vocal, up Asians. So yeah, I was gonna say he's like yeah. vaguely south south out LA. Ooh. So that's right, her style, <laughs> man. Vaguely vato. <laughs> that said though i think that i personally would like to either see him if he doesn't fight swanson i think mm-hmm. a matchup and, and it, it doesn't really benefit him much but mm-hmm. him and jeremy stevens could be very interesting to me as well oh, um man the little leader okay. the fight fan <laughs> in me yes Right, because it's going to be violent, and 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 it's yeah. going to be, it's going to be explosive. To me, that first round is going mm-hmm. to be probably out of this world if it gets out of the first round between him and Stevens. Um, you know, not that I, I, I'm not I'm not really high on Stevens' stock for no real reason. I mean, he's okay, yeah. but he is entertaining to watch, and yes. and I do think that he's going to go in there, kind of balls to the wall, try to get it done, and I think that that stylistically matches up um, in an intriguing way with Ige. So yeah, Stevens. Okay. That's, all right. That's what I got. All right. So, all right, everybody. So that'll wrap it up. That was our last segment. Um, thanks for tuning in. Those are all of our takes. Again, please like our work below. The like button should be somewhere down there. I mean, by now, if this is like at least your second video, you know, we're going to ask for it. Um, subscribe to the channel. Um, fell somewhere where around, I don't smash know, that thing that. like your You'll daddy smashed your mama before they got married well okay <laughs> then that too um leave a comment and let us know what you think down below um if you like anything that we were saying that's cool if you don't like anything we we're saying that's cool too um also hit us up on twitter at bows throwing again at bows throwing uh if you want to discuss anything in the world about mma don't forget we do have bellator coming up here shortly and so if you guys are kind of like hey this is great but i also would like to see what you think about bellator we have that locked and loaded it's just back there in stock so anytime you want we'll just pull it pull out thing we'll out just yeah we'll just, we'll just pull it out for you um and so with that guys we are done thank you so much for tuning in look forward to seeing you next time peace we're out bye guys bye.